Sometimes as writers, we want to tell a story that's bigger than any one character, or that for some reason requires multiple perspectives. Yet at the same time, we don't want to lose that closeness that point of views like first person or third person offer. So today I want to talk about the pros and cons of multiple points of view and how it's different than using omniscient. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping writers like you transform your writing so it impacts readers, because writing that impacts gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. I want to start by talking about the differences between omniscient and multiple points of view. Omniscient and multiple points of view are both attempting to do the same thing. They're creating a story that's bigger than any single character, they're showing multiple perspectives, and they're showing events that are happening at different places in your world. But they do this in different ways. In Omniscient, you can have one line where the heroine is thinking about how she's going to escape, and in the very next sentence, you can show what the villain is thinking. In multiple points of view, you don't do that. You write a scene or a section from one character's point of view and you stick to that character. There is no head hopping. When you switch to another character's perspective, there's a distinct transition and you let the reader know whose point of view you have switched into. Even if there's another point of view character present in the scene in multiple points of view, you still are only in the one character's point of view. When you need to create a story that's bigger than any one character, you really have two options. You can use multiple perspectives, or you can use omniscient point of view. Let's talk about the pros of multiple points of view. The first pro of multiple points of view is the ability to show what multiple characters are thinking, feeling, and doing. When you do this, the reader gets a greater sense of the relationships between the characters and of your overall world. The reader gets more perspectives and therefore more information, so they can know more than any one character. This gives you the opportunity to create dramatic irony. Dramatic irony is when a reader is thinking, no, don't go into that room, because they know there's something dangerous behind that door, but the character doesn't know that. So you can only create dramatic irony when your reader knows more than your characters do. Dramatic irony is a great tool to use to create tension, suspense, faster pacing, and curiosity. Another pro to multiple points of view is readers get to stay close to the characters. There's not that distance that Omniscient creates because at any given time, a reader is in a specific character's point of view. This means that the reader is always steeped inside one character's head. They're seeing their thoughts, their emotions, their actions. So it has that closeness of points of view like first, second, and close third but we still get those different perspectives because we're switching between characters. When you switch points of view instead of using omniscient, you also are able to show different aspects of your world. You can show different classes in society. You can show what's happening in different areas of your country and different consequences of your magic system and so much more. Instead of just giving an overview like Omniscient does, you are showing these aspects of your world through different characters' eyes. So different characters are going to see these things differently. A character who's in a higher class in society might not know what the people in poverty are going through. They might not care. They might not feel as inclined to change things as your other character who was brought up in that lower class of your world. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel tells the story of our world before, during, and after an epidemic. And she tells the story through multiple points of view. One character is seven when the epidemic occurs, another is in his early 20s, and another is in the middle of his life. What this means is you get to see how this affects people at different ages. The person who was seven when the world ended is going to remember different things about the previous world than the person who was in his 50s. Station Eleven would be a completely different book if it was only told from one character's perspective. Novels that use multiple points of view successfully include Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, Versailles by Catherine Davis, Curio by Evangeline Denmark, and The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Next, I'd like to share the cons of multiple points of view. 
The first con of multiple points of view is it can be confusing. If you have too many points of view or if you're not clearly transitioning between the characters, your readers can become confused and they can have a difficult time knowing who they should care about and root for and also whose perspective they're in. You really have to create distinct character voices in order for multiple point of view to work. One way to combat this is to have the first line of each new section from a new character's point of view clearly show whose point of view it is. An example of this is Curio by Evangeline Denmark. Each time she starts a new chapter from a new character's point of view, she makes sure and tell the reader immediately whose point of view they're in. Here are the first lines from three different chapters. Liz flew far enough back from the last marching soldier to remain hidden. Wit's cheek stung. The fabric under Gray's cheek was wet, but her eyes were puffy and dry. Each of these lines not only gives the point of view character's name immediately, it also reminds the reader what was happening the last time they saw these characters. Blaze was attempting to sneak into a castle. Wit had just gotten into a fight, that's why his cheek stings. And Grey was crying herself to sleep, which is why she woke up with puffy cheeks. Beginning each section, both with the character's name and with what had happened to them last, helps create continuity within your story. And it makes for smoother transitions. Even if it's clear which character's point of view the reader is in, the story can still be confusing if you have too many points of view happening. This is when readers don't know who the protagonist is, they don't know who they should root for and who they should not root for, and they might lose interest. In order to prevent this, you really need to work on creating distinct character voices and also giving them some sort of an endearment or reason for readers to care about. Another problem with multiple points of view is you can go off on tangents pretty easily and lose the main story. So if you are using multiple points of view, make sure that you're sticking to your outline if you outline or to the idea that you had in your head originally instead of going off on all of these different tangents. You really need to rein in your characters to keep your story tight. If you do find yourself going off on tangents, Maybe you need multiple books instead of multiple points of view. Next, I want to provide an editor's advice on multiple points of view. The first thing you need to do when writing in multiple points of view is make sure that each point of view you're using is absolutely necessary. It's a lot of work to develop a solid point of view and give that character a distinct voice so that your readers know who's speaking at any given time. So you don't want to do all of that work if you don't have to. Also, your readers can become bogged down or confused if you have too many points of view, so making sure that each one is needed will help prevent that. If you don't need multiple points of view, don't use them. But if you do need multiple points of view, then go for it. Don't be afraid to use them. Another thing I'd like to note is all of your point of views don't need to be the same. What I mean is you can have one point of view in first person and two others in third person. Or you could have first person and omniscient, or second person and third person. Sometimes when you have different types of points of view happening, it's easier to show whose point of view you've just switched into, because your reader subconsciously knows, oh, this is first person, they're using I, that means it's this character. Oh, they just said this character's name, they're using third person, I know it's this character's point of view. In Versailles, Catherine Davis actually uses three points of view. She has first person for Marie Antoinette, omniscient for the play sections, and a very distant third person in other chapters. This allows her to have Marie Antoinette tell her own story to the reader while still making the reader aware of other things that were happening in France at that time and bringing the Palace of Versailles to life. In Versailles, Davis is telling both the story of the person, Marie Antoinette, and of the Palace of Versailles. So she really needed these different perspectives in order to get that across. When you're working on the point of view of your story, think about what you're trying to accomplish. Do you need multiple perspectives in order to really get your message across? Would dramatic irony add something to your story that would be worth having those other points of view? Or do you want something that's tighter and closer and focuses on only one character? It really depends on your goals and your specific story. What aspects of switching point of view do you find the most useful? Share them in the comments below.
and subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing for more videos like this that dive into a specific aspect of writing to help you transform your writing so it lingers with readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a chart comparing the different points of view. And now it's your turn. Explore different points of view in your story to see how they can help you ignite your ink.